Welcome back to Raw Food Prep Class. We've got another great, tasty, delicious, amazing recipe for you today. And today we're gonna to get into the sweets and desserts, but into the liquid side of desserts, and that's the winter warmer known as hot chocolate. Everyone likes a cup of hot chocolate, and most of the time that hot chocolate is not something most people should be drinking. Why? Because it's loaded with sugar, it's loaded with poor quality chocolate, it's loaded with other stuff like chemicals and preservatives, especially if it comes out of a tin. So what we're gonna do now is show you how to make a hot chocolate at home that tastes delicious, that's quick to make, and simple and phenomenally nutritious. Nutrition to such a degree that you might as well be taking vitamins, but instead you're drinking a cup of hot chocolate. So let's get going with that. We're gonna be using our trusty blender again. The blender's ready to go. Um, once again, any blender will do with this. You're just mixing something through. Technically, I suppose, you could even just use your hand in a bowl with a fork to mix up all the ingredients. But I like the blender, it just gives it a nice consistency and keeps it smooth. So what are our ingredients we'll be using today? We've got water, which has been warmed, not boiled, just warmed. You wanna turn your kettle off before it boils. Normally about, um, say 10 seconds after it started making a noise is when it's a good time to turn it off, then it's hot. It's still gonna be hot enough to burn your mouth, so don't worry about it not being hot. Then we're gonna use some nut milk. This is the almond nut milk we made, which has got all the goodness of almonds in it without any of the other stuff that you'd get in animal milks. Remember, those are the milks we really want to be cutting down as much as we can. Then we're obviously going to be using the chocolate. So we've got raw cacao, we've got raw cacao beans, powder, and some nibs, and some butter. And we'll use a variation of all of those. We want some sweetness, so we're going to be using some raw wildflower Cape Tonian honey. We're gonna have some flavor with vanilla. We'll add half a vanilla bean in there. Okay, so let's get all the ingredients into the blender and blending it up. You can see the water's quite warm. It's perspiring on the sides. So that's gonna give us a nice hot chocolate. And then I'm gonna pour in the nut milk. And you'll see when I pour this in how... Looks like I've just poured in milk. Pure almonds and water, delicious. Okay, next let's add in our sweetener, which is the delicious honey. Now other sweeteners you could maybe use are things like um, agave nectar, could be an option. You could use stevia powder, which is a herb, which is very sweet. Definitely don't want to be using artificial sweeteners because those things have been shown to damage the central nervous system. So you want to stay away from those kind of things. Basically, if you have a problem with sugar and the sweets cause you to go all buzzed out, you maybe just want to put in less sweetener. But we're making hot chocolate, so it really does have to be sweet. You can see how amazing this honey is, the amount of enzymes present, giving it that amazing gooiness. Awesome. There we go, honey's in. Okay, next ingredient, we're gonna add the cacao. Now for those who don't know yet and this, haven't heard the secret, cacao is a health food. And my, what is cacao? You've never heard the word before, it might be a cow, might be related to dairy in some way, no. It's cacao, and the word you would have used is cocoa. Cocoa is a slang term to describe the fruit of a jungle plant or tree, and this jungle tree is known as the cacao tree and its fruit is the cacao bean. Now this bean has been revered in central um, tropical areas for centuries as a medicinal food. It's phenomenally rich in all sorts of nutrients. And if you have a look at this bean, it's beautiful. It's just been sun dried, no other processing done to it. And this comes out of the fruit. Now we're very lucky today in that I've actually got a pod to show you. This is how you would get it off of a jungle tree. Oh, wrong way around, that way around. So it would grow out the side of the tree in a pod. This is quite a small pod, they become quite a lot bigger. And this pod was bright yellow. It's dried out, so it's gone a bit brown. I picked this myself in Ecuador. And this pod, once cut, cut open, has the beans inside. And the white flesh that surrounds the beans is incredibly sweet, sort of like a lychee. So what we've done is we've taken those beans and taken them out 
and that's what you end up with a bean. Now to get the bean into powder, the bean gets ground fine and then you have the powder. To get the butter, the bean is cold pressed to remove the fat. And those are the variations of cacao. Now we're going to use a little bit of everything, but if I break this bean in half, see it has the most amazing color inside. It's not the normal brown you'd think chocolate would be. It's actually a bit of a purple color. So chocolate is a purple fruit. Now purple is one of those colors that's not that prevalent in our diet, so we need to get more in. And what the color is telling us is that it's incredibly rich in antioxidants. So those are the guys that nourish our cells and stop ourselves from breaking down and aging us prematurely. So we're gonna get more of these in. And raw cacao, that's unheated, unprocessed cacao, has been shown to provide more antioxidants than almost anything. The purple color in the cacao is telling us that it's rich in antioxidants. So we really want to get those into us. We don't get enough antioxidants in our diets at the moment because food is processed and all the color is lost. So that's one of the big things about cacao. Another thing about cacao is it's very rich in magnesium. And magnesium is a mineral that supports the heart and it makes the muscles relaxed and gives us that feeling of relaxation. So we need to get more of that in. People are very much not relaxed in society at the moment. They're very stressed, there's a lot of tension and chocolate would, will help with that. Another thing about cacao is it's packed with incredibly powerful brain neurochemicals. Now these chemicals are naturally in the brain but as we age they drop off so we lose them and we become very serious. Chocolate can bring that playful laughter back into our life so that's another awesome reason why adding chocolate is a good idea. Enough talking about it, let's use it and let's make our, our um, chocolate because it's getting cold. Okay, so I'm going to put a few beans in, just so we get the whole food in there. Then I'm going to put a few nibs in. Now the nibs are just the beans that have been broken up into little pieces. So they're really the same thing, it's just the only difference is there's no skin. So if I pour the nibs in, just a couple, you can see the color of the nibs. They have a beautiful light purple tinge to them. Stunning color. Okay, so we put all of that in. What else we got? The powder. Powder is the main ingredient to make it chocolatey. Because the powder is fine already and it's got that smooth, rich chocolate fa flavor, that's what's going to impart the chocolatiness to our hot chocolate. So you can put in a few tablespoons. I'm going to put in about three, I reckon would be good. The only thing that's going to happen if you put too much in is it's going to be very bitter. So you're going to have to add in more sweetness because cacao by itself isn't sweet. It's the sweetness that get added that make it sweet when you buy chocolate in the shop. Like this, it's actually quite bitter. So we've got the chocolate. You can see that's already mixing through nicely by itself. Next thing I'm going to add is a bit of vanilla. So I'm just going to take the vanilla. And I've got a little chunk of the vanilla bean itself that I'm going to add in there just for a little bit of a vanilla taste. And that's the whole vanilla bean from Madagascar. No essence or extract or anything like that in a bottle. The whole food. And then the other thing we can add to our, our drink is one block of the actual butter. Now the reason I add the cacao butter like this to it is it just adds a bit more fattiness to the, to the hot chocolate and that creamy fattiness is amazing on the tongue. Someone will drink it and just go, wow, what was that? It's incredible. So add that in. You can actually add that to any tea you make. A little block of chocolate butter to any tea will melt on top, become these little golden speckles and someone will leave your house going, that's the best tea I've ever had. So definitely add that in. So I can hear people are already getting a bit worried. They're going, that's a lot of fat he's thrown in there. A whole block of cacao fat. How can that be good? Now fat, if you have too much, will make you fat because your body is not burning it as fuel. So you need to firstly make sure you exercise enough to burn the calories in fat. But we also, also have to be clear that there's a very big difference between raw plant fats and cooked plant fats and or cooked animal fats. Raw plant fats provide fat that our cells need desperately. Our cells are surrounded by fat. If we don't get enough fat in our diet, the right kind of fat, our cells won't function properly. Now, if you have too much fat, 
it's a problem. But if you have the wrong kind of fat, it's more of a problem. And the wrong kind would be anything that's been hydrogenated or fried or cooked in any way. And certainly anything that comes out of an animal. Those are the kind of fats you really want to stay away from because those are the ones that are toxic to your health. If you're getting in only raw plant fats, that's amazing. That's just going to give you super nutrition and going to nourish your cells. But once again, if you're going to eat lots and lots and lots of fats and you're not going to exercise, you are going to pick up weight. So be careful of that one. Okay, so we've put in all of our ingredients. One last little thing I wanted to add is a little pinch of Himalayan rock salt. Now the reason I'm adding salt is that salt is actually an amazing flavor booster with chocolate. And you literally only need a little pinch of it. You don't want it to be salty, but a tiny little bit is all you need. Okay, so all our ingredients are in. It's getting ready, it's getting cold, so let's blend it up and have a taste. Let the spirit move you, show no fear. Let the spirit move you, as we're going. Let the spirit sound you, show no fear. Let the spirit now you, let us get better than. Let the spirit move you. Let the spirit move you. Mmm, amazing chocolatey smell. That is going to make any chocoholic very happy. Let's get it into glasses and. There you go. And if you want to be really fancy, you can even put a little dollop of chocolate butter in the middle of each one because it'll melt and give it a little yellow bubble sheen. And that's it. Make sure it's all good. That's excellent. Anyone who likes chocolate is going to love this one. And remember, this is not just a sweet treat or a cheat or a sinful drink. This is super nutrition in a glass of love. So drink up. So one of the things to remember and to be aware of is that you can use inferior chocolate powder in making a hot chocolate like this. But you need to know that that stuff probably isn't organic, which means it's been grown with pesticides, which means you're going to get all of that. Secondly, it's gone through a heat roasting process, which takes it up over 100 degrees Celsius. And what that process does is that it cooks the chocolate bean and makes the chocolate bean lose around 90% of its antioxidant concentration. What that means is that one of the re main reasons why chocolate is amazing is lost or destroyed. So cooked chocolate does have antioxidants in it, and quite a lot, but it's 90% less than it should have in its raw form. In its raw form, you get it all, you get everything the way it should be. And having a drink like that provides all those antioxidants in a drink. So that's a very important thing to remember. The other thing about cooked chocolate is that the roasting process does alter the fats. And you probably know that cooking fats changes it from a good fat into a bad fat. And that's absolutely the same thing with chocolate. Roasting at high temperature does degrade the oil in the cacao bean. So you need to try and make sure that you're getting the highest quality chocolate you can get to make sure that it's for your health that you're having it. And not just to fill a gap of wanting to have something sweet or tasty, but actually including that it can do good things for your body as well. Because good health and tasty food are not on two separate pages of a book. They can be on the same page. You can have both at the same time. Great. That's it. There you go. Drink up. Yay. Yeah. Are you having?
spirit so yo Shorty's my pen Let the spirit now yo I'm gonna get mad with them